Prime Minister's announcement in September seemed to hail a shift towards an intelligent and pragmatic common sense net zero. But we need to get back to that and reverse the secondary legislation, which, as it happens, can be done on Monday when it comes to the floor of the House as a remaining order, because it undermines his promise. And fundamentally, he needs to root out ideological green policies that risk making us cold and poor. Of course, I want to hear from you, mailmog at gbnews.com. Um, but I'm delighted to be joined now by the motor journalist and former host of Top Gear, Quentin Wilson. Quentin, thank you very much for Pleasure. coming in. Um, it's the incongruity, isn't it, that the Prime Minister says one thing, and then two months later, a statutory instrument goes through on a Wednesday morning, which nobody notices, which basically means what he says won't happen. Well, he made that announcement about 2030 as, as an act of electioneering. You know that, Jacob. Um, and You're then, cynic. Oh, of course I'm a cynic. Prime Minister, don't yeah. I, oh my goodness. Come now. Um, but, but the Z mandate is, is really important. And I was in Parliament today and I heard there were no, no votes whatsoever for it. Uh, but I was with a, a, a bunch of car makers yesterday with the SMT and every one of them want this Z mandate because it gives them industrial policy certainty. And it's no good flip-flopping. And that announcement uh, about 2030, they were up in arms. So we need investment in this country. And, 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 and the, 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 the impact report you mentioned, 160, 147 billion, at the bottom of that report, and, and you, you know this, Jacob, it says the benefits are 166 billion. So there's 39 billion in credit, 1,400 pounds per household. Yes, but actually, I've looked through that, and I've got the figures in front of me, because that's bogus. Um, that includes a fuel cost benefit of 34 billion, which is the tax the government charges you. So that's a voluntary thing, and in the economy as a whole, is circular because it remains within the economy. It also includes nearly 80 billion on cars alone. There's another charge. It's a on vans. Hold, hold on, I notice. But 80 billion, 79 billion, 83 million of non traded carbon dioxide cost. This isn't a cost. This isn't a real cost. This is an invented charge that the government thinks is what you would need to do to offset the carbon. But you've got no obligation to offset the carbon. So you've got here 80 billion, another 23 billion on um, vans, 103, nearly 104 billion of fantasy costs that they're saying make it profitable. But the fact remains is that investment will come into the UK. We had an announcement yesterday of 20 billion coming into the automotive sector from outside investments for green technology. And, and the, the oil and gas, these are sunset technologies. We need to, to, to look to the future and we need to, to, to create renewable, sustainable, cheaper energy for everybody and not monopolistic regimes who hike the price for their own the, benefit. The, the argument I would make is if these electric vehicles are so good, they will win in the marketplace. They don't need the government to regulate and to ban. You see, if you create a false market, and you make cars that people want to buy disproportionately expensive, you add 15,000 pounds to their cost, then people will buy less good things and you create a poor market because you're not allowing the forces of competition to work. But this is the biggest change for 100 years. These things don't happen just by market forces. But you need to give them a nudge. This is, we had the Clean Air Act in 1954. We'd all still be b burning coal if we didn't do that. But they did happen last time round by market forces, didn't they? You didn't need the government to ban the horse and cart. People wanted cars because they worked, they were better, and they were economically viable. And, of course, their costs fell as more and more were produced. As will happen now. Now, if, if, if you... I mean, my electric car, I charge it up overnight on a low nighttime electricity t tariff. It costs me £8 to do 300 miles. So the average family will save between £1,200 and £2,000 in fuel every year. The maintenance on my electric car, £40 a year, Jacob. So the massive but the, savings. But the saving that you make on the fuel price is merely the tax. But if you were simply paying the cost of petrol, you could run 300 miles for eight pounds. We, that, don't. we ah, have to pay the tax. Yes, but the tax is within the economy as a whole. So if you take the overall economy, whether you pay the tax uh, or not, the country at large still has that amount of money. 
and it needs it. I mean, the government's got to get tax from somewhere, and so it will have to get tax simply from somewhere else. So there's no real saving, it's just a shift uh, in where money but is raised. But it's saving for households who will feel the difference. No, it won't be, because they'll be taxed on something else instead. Well, that's not my fault, is it? All, no, 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 all no, but the that's the point. The that's the point. A, that, but that's a false market. And actually, it will come on cars, because governments have always liked taxing cars as long as they've been around. And that's why you've got to have a conversation about how we change that and, and maybe get rid of fuel duty, get rid of vehicle excise duty, and, and start charging people by the mile. But if you move to by the mile charging, people would stick with their petrol cars. That's why I say I let think. the market decide. Unless you give an incentive for uh, zero emission cars. But I don't want to give an incentive. No, I, I want don't. the market to decide <laughs> rather than bogus charges on my constituents, but making them cold and poor and unable to travel. They, they will be warmer and they will be able to travel further for less. And their maintenance costs of these cars, one of the biggest drags on, on family incomes, motoring costs, fuel, fuel duty, repairs, okay. MOTs. The maintenance costs are low until the battery goes foot. And then the maintenance okay. costs are catastrophic. The, 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 no, the batteries don't fail. There are cars. Mine did. Cars I had a Lexus and the bat a Lexus hybrid. That was a hybrid. And the yeah, battery yeah, just yeah, went. Yeah. And, and it wouldn't move and another inch. One. But all the data on, we have early. now, 400,000 miles on some of these electric cars. All right, I've got to move on, unfortunately. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Quentin. Uh, coming up, oh, more drama from the...